Hello, everybody. I'm Tony Dean, inviting you to climb aboard for a half-hour slice of the outdoors good life. Brought to you by Dodge Cars and Trucks. On the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of performance. It's the new spirit of Dodge. By South Dakota Tourism. In South Dakota, the fishing season never closes. By Minn Kota, the quiet power that catches fish. By Northland Fishing Tackle, quality baits in the bright yellow package. By Tangle Free Johnson Reels, cast a country mile. By North Dakota Tourism Promotion, discover the spirit. By Crestliner Boats, quality boats backed by the best warranty in the business. And by your local Evinrude Outboard dealer, the boating and fishing expert in your area. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our show. I'm Tony Dean. Hey, we got a good show lined up for you today. Well, on the other end here, I got a king salmon that's giving me all I can handle. Today, we're going to be introducing a technique that has really caught on on the Missouri River system. It's just getting going in the Great Lakes. But it's not totally new. It's something that's been going on in the Missouri River system and the, and the West Coast for a long, long time. And it's really starting to take those Great Lakes kings. Yeah, we're talking about the use of downriggers and bait, cut bait. Tom Davis, a West Coast salmon expert from Victoria, British Columbia, will be joining us in just a moment. By that time, I might have this guy in, so stay right where you're at. Studies have shown it can be determined almost from birth who's right for an Evinrude outboard motor. Evinrude owners are born, not made. I'm Gary Roach, and after 40 years of guiding and tournament fishing, I found no better way of catching fish consistently than using live bait on jigs and my new road trick. It's adjustable, versatile, and very deadly. I'll tell you what, when a walleye grabs a soft-bodied Northland lipstick jig or a Phelps floater, boy, you got them. Northland's Fireball and Fire Eye jigs are the best live bait jigs I've ever used, and that stinger gets them every time. They say that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Introducing the new Dodge Cummins Turbo Diesel. Full-size Dodge Ram with new anti-lock rear brakes. And the new Dodge dual rear wheel pickup. Now you know what the tough get going in. The new spirit of Dodge! The tough new spirit of Dodge! With Crestliner, you choose from over 80 models, including big water fishing boats, to cruisers, family runabouts, and out-and-out -out fishing machines. All loaded with Crestliner quality and Crestliner innovation, like the Space Saver transom and a rivet-free hull that gives you a soft, quiet ride, even in rough water. All backed with the best warranty in the business, and it's transferable. See your Crestliner dealer today. Come on up here, big fella. Oh. <laughs> there is nothing in the world like a king. I'll tell you what. There we go. And this system we're using, cut herring strips, utilized with downriggers, just like you fish on the Great Lakes, except we're using cut bait, is one of the deadliest things I've ever seen. In fact, the work we've done with it, along with the work of some highly respected Lake Michigan charter boat captains, convinces me that cut herring will not produce artificials by about a two-to-one margin. But the key to it is getting this bait tuned right. What I'm saying is you can't just put cut bait down and expect you're going you're gonna to instantly catch fish. I experimented with it a little bit a uh, couple years ago, and I found that there's a lot more to it than uh, just putting the bait. <laughs> Boy, is this guy's tough. That there's a lot more to it than just putting the bait down. In fact, my guest today, West Coast salmon expert, Tom Davis is going to show you how you rig this bait to really catch fish. And rigging it is the key, getting it tuned for the proper action. Here's Tom Davis. 
You're absolutely right, Tony. The action is the most important factor when you're fishing with these lures. Remember, we're trying to imitate the actual bait fish. So how you make this lure perform in the water is extremely important. Now, there are some things to remember before you put the herring strip in the lure. First thing, this is a frozen bait, so you've got to thaw it out completely. If you don't, you're not going to have that nice, supple, soft uh, bait in the water that produces a type of action you want to get. The second thing is, and this is extremely important, that on the plastic end of the lure we have a blister. And in that blister the leader runs through to the hook. We've taken a toothpick, rammed it in alongside the leader as a tension device, and then broken it off. So that means that we can position that hook anywhere we want in relationship to the herring strip. Now I'm going to put the strip in the lure now the right way, and this is also very important. We're going to take the strip, force it into the lure so that it goes right up to the top end. You want it right up here. If you got it in only part way, it's going to affect the action of the lure. Then we take a toothpick, we position that through the herring strip from the bottom side, force it all the way in, take a pair of cutters, and cut the, her and cut the toothpick off nice and clean, just like that. Now with the hook positioned back here like that, that's a pretty effective position to have it in terms of hooking up with fish. Now occasionally you might get a bait that turns over a little bit too slowly, or perhaps you might get one that turns over a little bit too quickly. And there are ways that you can compensate for that. Remember that we want to have this lure turn at about one or two revolutions per second. A very fast turning bait is not very effective for getting fish, or a bait that resists turning over is, is probably equally ineffective in catching the type of quality salmon that we're after. So, let's say that we have a bait here that's turning over too quickly. In other words, it revol it's revolving at a high rate of revolutions. What we will do is move the hook to the back end of the herring strip, where it's positioned here, and then take the tail section of the lure and flatten it out a little bit. That's going to slow down the rate of revolutions so that we get that proper action in the water. Now, conversely, if we have a bait that's not turning over very effectively at all or resisting turning over, well, we can pull up on the leader, move the hook up towards the blister like this, and if it still needs a little bit more tuning to it, we'll take the tail section and bend it down away from the herring strip. So, Tony, it, it's very basic, very simple. That's how we tune these lures, this particular herring strip lure, to get the type of action that we want, that, that, that we know is going to produce the kind of fish that we're after. I can't emphasize enough the importance of making sure that that bait is tuned properly to get the, the right kind of action. I think scent's a factor in it too, along with the texture and the feel of herring. And boy, this stuff really catches kings. I don't care what water you're fishing in. By a two to one margin, according to the research we've done on it, over artificial baits. Now there's a place for artificials too, but when it's tough, I'll tell you what, this herring will do a job. But again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of tuning it to get the right action. I fished it without success, without real good success for a couple of years, until I went to North Dakota and fished salmon with North Dakota pioneer salmon fisherman Lee Claprot, who's a real believer in this system, a system he also learned from Tom Davis. Well, what a memorable trip that was. It was the day I learned how to fish herring the right way. Lee Claprot lives in Bismarck, North Dakota, and fishes Lake Chicagoa for salmon. He's truly North Dakota salmon pioneer. Just before I went up to North Dakota to fish with Lee, he'd invited Tom Davis to fish with him, spending a week with Tom, utilizing these West Coast tactics. Lee said it revolutionized the way he and subsequent North Dakotans sought and caught Chinooks. He said he's come to believe very strongly that West Coast salmon were initially geared to feeding on herring, and even though they've now been transplanted into the Great Lakes and Missouri River system, they may still genetically retain a desire to feed on herring, whether that's true or not, we know they, they really hit those herring strips. But he believes as much as the bait, perhaps the West Coast approach to salmon fishing is just as applicable to other waters. Most of us have done most of our salmon fishing, at least successful salmon fishing, by emulating the very successful uh, Great Lakes tactics, open water, downrigger trolling, covering lots of water, putting lots of bait down. Oddly enough, on the West Coast where it all began, they put a lot more effort on fishing small key structural areas, believing that salmon not only prefer what we call structure, but that like walleyes, they tend to be much more bottom oriented. Of course, this probably is going to be related to the presence of forage and Great Lakes fish are frequently taken at mid depths. But again, we suspect it might be because alewives, the main forage in most of the Great Lakes, 
are often found at mid-depths. On the other hand, smelt, the main forage here in the Missouri River system, tend to be bottom-oriented. Thus, we frequently do better by concentrating our presentations on or near the bottom. West Coast experts like Tom Davis also feel very strongly that if you really want to catch more salmon, there's really no need to put a lot of baits in the water, to have six or eight downriggers on your boat and double stack and double rig and do all those things. Tom believes it's a lot more important to fish just a few baits, but make sure that your speed and your action are properly tuned and working well together. Out on the west coast, most salmon fishing is done in small boats with a maximum of two downriggers. They spend a lot of time checking baits, constantly adjusting the action to match the trolling speed. I think the beauty of the system is that it lends itself so favorably to small boat salmon fishing. And holy cow, you need just a pair of downriggers. Use the same boat you use for other types of fishing. And salmon fishing doesn't have to be as expensive as many believe it is. Oh, no question, this system's been used successfully for salmon on the West Coast for many years. And now we know it also works on the Missouri River system in the Dakotas. When world light heavyweight boxing champion Virgil Hill goes fishing back home in North Dakota, he's always ready for a fight. He looks for the right hook. He patiently waits for the hit and lands the big one. Take it from Virgil Hill. If you want great walleye fishing, come fish my home state, North Dakota. This Minn Kota takes quiet power in a whole new direction, down. It's the Sonar 35, the fishing motor that measures depth. Switch on the self-contained sonar system. Bright LEDs light up in the four-range display to show you the depth at a glance. Minn Kota Sonar 35 is the motor that measures depth with the quiet power that catches fish. Ever wish you could cast a country mile? The Country Mile Reel. Cast one. They say that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Introducing the new Dodge Cummins Turbo Diesel. Full-size Dodge Ram with new anti-lock rear brakes. And the new Dodge Dual Rear Wheel Pickup. Now you know what the tough get going in. I know if you fish the Great Lakes, you're going to be asking yourself, hey, will this system work on my water? After all, herring, anchovies, the cut baits used so successfully on the West Coast, and, and again recently in the Missouri River system in the Dakotas, hey, these baits don't swim in our waters. Well, neither do artificial lures for that matter. I tried it on Lake Michigan uh, earlier in the season. I drove into Ludington, which is one heck of a fine place to fish the big kings in Lake Michigan. It's one of the most successful ports of all. And we watched the wind blow real hard for a couple of days, but it finally laid down one evening. I was aboard the Therapy 2 with an old friend and an expert salmon angler, Jim Carr. Now, we were fishing 10 lines. Jim put down the baits that had been really working for him, primarily spoons, on seven of the lines. We rigged a combination of herring and anchovies, tuned properly on three of the lines. We'll let you see how it works in Lake Michigan. Hey, fish on, Jim, fish on. All right! Oh, 55 down. I don't think this is the kind we're looking for, though. Nope. He's not that really looks running. like a lake trout, doesn't it? Sounds like it, feels like it. Usually the Chinook, they take right off. He's punching real good. It might even be a brown. 55 foot down. No, oh, that was, yeah, well, that was on the, uh, that was on the herring. 
The herring. The that's anchovy. Right. The anchovy. Anchovy. Oh, now he's pulling a little bit. We might have a surprise here. Could be a real big laker. Do you want me to take my sunglasses off? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Joe Hollywood. Yeah, Joe Hollywood. Oh, he's pulling out a little bit of line. That could be a king. Yeah, it's giving be punching. Could be a nice brown even. I'm gonna set your sunglasses down, Jim. 55 down, he's staying down too. On an anchovy. First time I ever caught a fish on an anchovy. <laughs> Of course, we don't have them in the boat yet, though, do we? There's the rubber band. And I don't get to do this too often. I know you don't. Charter captains never get to catch fish. How can you guys be expert fishermen? Well, I guess the payback is as you. I enjoy the excitement the other people have. He's pulling hey, pretty he's, good. He's tough. He's tough. My goodness, yes. He's swimming right in there. He doesn't even know we're here yet. Look at that. He's going to know in a hurry. Doesn't look like a lake trout to me. No, His that looks like a salmon. Dark. Looks like we're really pulling down. I think we're fouled into something here. Besides, that's a good fish. Though. We've got another line with us, and it is, I think, on that other downrigger right there. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's the same. Yep. That's a that's you wanna, a king. You want to break uh, okay. number three loose? I think I put that slider on there. Maybe we pick that up. Yes, it is. You see the end of the pole wiggling? Okay, here we go. That one right there. There you go. That's a kinger. Yeah, it's a small king. Here, I'll just let that ride free, okay? Yep. Yeah, he did. He picked up the other lure besides. Whoa! He's got the anchovy and he's got that other blur wrapped around him. Boy, look at that. He just swallowed that whole thing. We ready? I'm all set. There we all go. All right. Look at that. <laughs> I'm not Get used the to a net that handle that handle long, Jim. That big net of mine, huh? Hey. Beautiful. There he is. Ate that anchovy. Look at it. It's gone. No question. Herring works just as good in the Great Lakes as it does on the West Coast and on the Missouri River system. Speaking of which, stay right where you're at. I'll show you how it works on Lake Oahe in South Dakota in just a moment. To use cut bait effectively, there are some key steps. First, keep the bait frozen until you're ready to use it. But when you rig, the bait has to be thawed for proper action. Whether you fish herring strips, whole herring, or anchovies and other West Coast bait that will be available, action is still the key. The bait has to roll, actually rotate one to two turns a second. You can adjust the special Reese Davis lures to match most any trolling speed. But we found speeds ranging from two to three miles per hour consistently to be the most productive for Chinooks. Oh, look at this king coming up. Are they beautiful or are they beautiful? And that's a case of using West Coast bait techniques, in this case cut herring, and the tiny teaser holder, the tiny teaser size, and in my experience, this will outfish artificials day in, day out, on about a two to one basis. And if the cut herring and the holders from Reese Davis Lure Company aren't available in your area, oh, look at that. If they aren't available in your area, you watch closely at the end of the show. And we'll show you exactly where to get it. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you want to try something that really produces king salmon, you try cut herring. I've never seen anything like it. It really does a job. Now here's how you can obtain these frozen baits, the Reese Davis lures or bait holders, and information on how to fish them. If you fish Lakes Michigan, Erie, or Ontario, call 517-694-7175. If you fish Lake Superior, call 612-566-2082. And in the Dakotas, dial 701-258-7751. Now stay tuned for prairie grouse hunting action. 